Hey, uh, welcome back to the channel. This is another in a series of videos that I'm doing on uh, what's that steel. And uh, today we're going to be talking about AUS-8 a a -US steel. That's what is in this knife right here. And a couple of the knives that you see down here. And, um, uh, you know, we get these knives, uh, we pick them up. They got all these letters on there. Uh, we look at it, what the heck is that? And what does it mean? And is that a good steal for me to get? Should I get it? Should I not get it? And so um, that's what this video is about. We're mainly concentrating on um, AUS-8 steel and um, whether that's a good choice for you. So if you'd like to hear more about that, check out the video. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Hi to all my friends. Bonjour, privet, guten tag, hola, ciao, and konnichiwa to my foreign uh, viewers. And um, today we're going to be talking about AUS-8 steel. And uh, whether that's a good steel for you or whether it's a good steel at all. And so, um, so we're going to talk about the uh, history. Where does this steel come from? We're going to talk about the um, characteristics of this steel. Is it tough? Is it uh, corrosion resistant? Uh, is it easy to sharpen? Those type of things. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this in relation to maybe some other steels. And so um, let's get right to it. Uh, this steel was uh, produced by Ayachi. AICHI Steel Company in uh, Japan, primarily to compete against um, uh, 440C steel, the US 440C steel. So that's what this uh, steel was designed to uh, do. And um, it's fairly old steel. I'm not sure how old. I know they were using it in like 1997. It's been a very popular steel. Um, in front of you is a cold steel uh, Marauder Bowie knife. It uses uh, AUS-8 steel. And um, Spyderco used a lot of AUS-8 steel. So um, it's used in knives quite a bit. But it is uh, kind of an uh, older steel. And so I think uh, a lot of manufacturers are kind of getting away from it. So um, up on your screen right now, uh, you could see the... Um, alloy content in it you'll notice uh, up at the top we have carbon at 0 0.7 to 0.75 percent anything over the six percent point six percent carbon is considered a high carbon steel um, but this steel is on the lower end of high carbon steels it has vanadium in it 0.1 percent to 0.26 percent chromium at 13 to 14.5 uh, percent Chromium is what makes it a stainless steel, and so it's kind of a middle-of-the-line stainless steel. And um, um, there, there's molybdenum in it, 0.1% to 0.3%. Um, that mainly is added to increase the hardness of it. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, nickel uh, content is 0.5%. Uh, that helps with corrosion um, and also uh, toughness of the steel. Um, magnesium is 0.5%. Uh, That's to increase the um, toughness of the steel also. And then sulfur at 0.03%. And um, that's the chemical makeup of this steel. And... Um, Typically, this steel is hardened to 58 to 59 percent um, on the Rockwell chart, HRC, uh, which is considered high, although there's a lot of steels now you can take a lot higher, but um, that is considered high. And um, 
the best way to uh, heat treat this steel is cryogenically and we'll talk about that um, I guess right now and also uh, one of the one of the cons of this steel so this is an Ontario rat one I EDC this about 30% of the time I, I love it I love this knife and uh, you can see it has AUS 8 steel in it. So I have had um, blade roll in this. And that's where the edge or edge roll. That's where the edge will roll over a little bit. And um, that's kind of disconcerting to a lot of people when that happens. It's not really a big thing. Um, but it's probably not something you want to see on your knife. And so uh, all I did is, you know, just put it on a stone, comes right out, and it's just as good as it ever was. Um, but that's one of the criticisms of this steel is that it's kind of soft. And so I don't think that is the case. And I think the reason this uh, rolled was um, improper heat treatment by um, Ontario. I don't know for sure that that's the case. I don't know whether I haven't really noticed a lot of people complaining about that in these knives, <clears throat> but they do complain about it in a AUSA. So I think that um, that rollover problem is a heat treatment problem and you have to heat treat this steel like every steel properly. And um, I'll tell you another reason why that is not, as big a problem as it might seem to you. This knife right here is a Benchmade in uh, S30VN, which is a uh, super steel, S30V right here. And uh, so this is a, a very hard steel. And um, one of the downsides of this steel is that it can chip and it can break. And so um, guys have complained that, that uh, this steel has chipped when they hit a rock or um, when they, they've actually dropped the knife and had chips in it or even the steel break in it. And that's because it's so hard. And so the advantage of AUS-8 is that um, this just kind of bends. You know, it's a softer steel. And that makes for a tougher steel. And um, I'm showing you a chart now on the screen um, that compares it to S30V. And you can see that, that the uh, AUS-8 is about twice as tough as S30V. And um, I'm coming to you from a point of uh, uh, steel manufacturing. And so I'm not saying um, that from personal experience or my personal belief. I'm just uh, putting out there what knife manufacturers um, say and what steel manufacturers uh, say as they grade the characteristics of these knives and that's what you see up there so that's really surprising it was surprising to me that this steel is considered to be um, twice as tough as s30 but i get it right uh, toughness is sometimes we misconstrue that and think about that as a um if a knife is really hard, it's really tough. And actually, it's the opposite that's true. So a uh, softer knife, toughness is the ability of that knife to withstand stress that's uh, placed on it where it won't break. And so, um, for instance, um, uh, swords use spring steel in it. It's a softer steel. And um, that's so they can absorb the impact that swords have to absorb. So... Um, that's one of the uh, downfalls of AUSA. <laughs> I've never had that problem with uh, cold steel products, by the way. They uh, cryogenically uh, treat their blades. And so that may be, you know, the problem with Ontario. It may just be a fluke in this knife. I don't know. Uh, I love the knife. I love the steel. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> uh, in the description, I put a link to uh, Survival Lily. Very popular uh, survivalist. I think she's from Austria. And um, the um, video is about uh, her experience with a cold steel knife. Different knife. SRK uh, knife. And she used that primarily for like six years. 
And so the video is uh, a lot of video of her using the knife <clears throat> and her talking about how tough it is and how uh, good that AUS-8 steel is. And that's a video from real life perspective where I'm talking about scientific stuff here. So you may want to check that out if you're considering this steel. Um, so um, bu -bu 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 uh, this steel uh, is equivalent to 8CR15 MOV, which is a Chinese steel. Um, it's equivalent to X70CR MO15, which is a uh, German steel. And it's also equivalent to 440B. In the examples I just gave you, it's actually superior than 440B and... Um, in the 8CR15 MOV, um, where this middle of the line stainless steel comes into its own is it has good corrosion resistance. But it's very easy to sharpen the blade, and the it has pretty good edge retention, so it'll it'll withstand a lot before it starts to dull. So if you're uh, new to survival or or hiking or hunting and you're looking for a steel for your knife that might be a good steel for you or if you just have a hard time sharpening your your knife it might be a good steel for you because it's very easy to sharpen um these super steels like this s30v if you let them go dull it's going to take you a couple hours to get this sharpened if you have m4 crew wear and you let that go dull, it's going to take you a lot longer than a couple hours to get it sharpened. And so um, when you have a super steel, don't let it go dull, okay? So if you're that guy who doesn't pay attention to your your the edge of your knife until it goes dull, this would be a good steel for you. Um, that's one of the better characteristics of it. Um, it's highly resistant to uh, chipping, so it makes a really good survival knife or camp knife. Um, because inevitably you're going to hit something hard like a rock, you know, and you don't mean to, but you do. And so it's a, a much more forgiving steel um, than some of the other choices that you might uh, make. Um, what else do I want to cover on this? Uh, 440C is actually a better steel than this, but uh, I'll put that up in the um, uh, box right there. You can see the comparison between the two. It's twice as tough as 440C, but 440C has a better edge retention in it. Uh, why, why would a knife company go with AUSA over 440C? It has to do with cost, so... I think a lot goes into it. You know, a manufacturer is looking at a knife. What uh, what are people going to use that for? And um, what's cost trade-off involved in that? And so Ase is a budget stainless steel. And I don't know whether that's still true today, uh, but for a long time it cost less than 440C. And so um, knife manufacturers put it on their uh, blades. I also think there's a psychological component there. So uh, you're developing this really cool knife. This is a cool Bowie knife, a little different than most. Uh, has a fighting choil here, fighting finger choil. It's a great knife, by the way. These Marauders, uh, man, you can't beat them for the price that you can pick these up for. But um, at any rate, you're designing a new knife. 440C is an old steel uh, been used in America for 80 years, and y you know, uh, you might want to just put a, a, a different steel on your knife so that when people pick up this new knife, they see a new steel too. So, I do think there's a psychological component there, but um, I think cold steel, you know, it's a, a USA is tough, they sell their knives. Uh, very aggressively used in aggressive manners um, and definitely you know knife abuse um, so maybe that's why they chose uh, a USA I don't know I think it boils down to money but anyhow that's the deal on a USA I think it's a really good steal I've been satisfied with my knives that have it on there and again 
I think the bottom line is heat treatment. So um, steel is steel. It's hard. That's why we use it. It's harder than bronze. That's why we use steel. If you heat treat steel properly and you temper it properly, it's going to perform uh, good for you, no matter what kind of steel it is. Um, where the where these uh, very specific char characteristics make a difference. Say you live in South Florida, uh, a lot of salt in the air, uh, human environment. You may want the maximum corrosion resistance that you could get, and 440C would provide a better choice than this knife right here in that environment. Uh, if it's not such a big concern to you, this knife may be better. So uh, anyhow... I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. hope you found it informative, and I really appreciate all y'all's support. Thanks again.